All right, everybody, and welcome. You have made it to Friday. Congratulations. And there should be an applause here. Where's it at? There it is. All right. Uh, so, yeah, it's Friday, and uh, it's our excuse not to do anything uh, for the rest of the day. Uh, unless you're on the West Coast time, then it's still before lunch and you're just SOL, you gotta, you gotta do some work still. I, I don't think I can, I can stall you that long anyway. Anyway, welcome to Cyber Social Hub's Hubcast. Uh, I'm your host, Kevin DeLong, founder of Cyber Social Hub. Uh, we got a good show for you guys today. You're gonna learn all kinds of awesome stuff. But before I bring everyone up onto the, the screen here, and uh, it's about time. Oh yeah, Friday's about time. Sorry, Megan. I just now saw what you were saying there and uh, I was like, what? what do you mean it's about time? Uh, yeah, we went off live on time, but it's Friday is what you're talking about, I'm assuming, is, uh, is for that on time. So very cool stuff. So if you guys aren't subscribed to us here on YouTube, I am told that I must tell you. Now, this, this is for my daughter, by the way, because I always forget and she yells at me. She goes, Dad, you have to tell everyone to like and subscribe. So I'm like, all right, all right, I'll, I'll do that. So there it is. There's the one thing. Uh, if you're watching right now, go ahead and hit that like button. And then uh, also subscribe to the channel. And almost what I forgot is if you want to get notified when we do go live, um, hit that little bell down there in the, in the corner somewhere on your screen. If you're on YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, if you're watching us on Facebook, Twitter, or uh, LinkedIn right now, Keep in mind, we cannot see your chat unless you're on YouTube or Facebook. Um, so if you're talking to us on LinkedIn or Twitter, um, you're, you're talking to yourself. It's okay, though. It's okay. There's help for that. Come on over to YouTube, and, uh, and you can uh, and join the conversation live as it goes on right there. Um, so also, hey, if you guys didn't know, we have a little daily podcast we do. We were originally going to start broadcasting this one in audio form only, um, and then some of the shenanigans that we do just require a visual. Um, and, and we may put some of the episodes up there, but we do a thing called Daily Digital Investigator. And, and what I do is just kind of cruise, or, cruise around, try to find something interesting that day and talk about it for under five minutes. I know me talking for under five minutes is, is challenging, but it, it usually happens. Um, I haven't done the one yet today. So if you guys have any awesome topics you want to throw in chat, like, uh, you know, Brett's new book, oh, I could probably do something like that. Um, and then, uh, you know, we can, we can talk about that, uh, there. So that's, that, that'd, that'd be fun. I think actually, um, unless Brett, you just want to come on to the, the audio only show today at some point. Cause I do have to record an episode, uh, make it fairly short, like under 20 minutes. If we could do that, that'd be great up to you, man. Uh, no, no pressure on that. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's about it, um, for our updates. Uh, Megan, we got anything else going on at cyber social hub that, uh, that we need to be people aware of all kinds of webinars and things like that. We're making some changes to the site. We do have a little bug on the, on the site. If you guys have been in cyber social hub uh, over the last couple of days, you're going to see some wonkiness with uh, maybe some uh, of our sponsor ads are showing or not showing. Uh, we got a little bug on there that we're, we're trying to work through. Uh, I don't like making notice of those, but Hey, that's me transparent. Uh, it's, it's what it is. Um, so Luke, you have, uh, you have some snow you said in, uh, in New Hampshire. Holy crap. That's crazy. It was just lightly snowing here. I'm in Northern Ohio, uh, when I was just out. Uh, so it's one of those things that, that happens. Unfortunately, we live in the, in the North. So, all right, I'm checking over to my guests to make sure everybody is good. Everybody's rocking away. All right. Awesome. I told him I'd give him a little heads up before I just plop them out on the air in case, you know, they were, uh, you know, picking teeth or, you know, on the phone, whatever it is that they they would have been doing. So we got a good crew. We got like a big crew today. I'm just going to go ahead and pop them up on the screen here and boom, there they are. I got Kyle, Rich and Seth joining me from, uh, from ADF solutions guys. How are you today? Doing very well. well Thanks for well. Well. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Um, it's not very often we get a uh, a big crew on um, on the screen, so I had to make uh, you know. Sorry, our pictures might be a little bit small to everyone on the on the screen, but you know, I thought everyone would be there uh, to make to make sure you could get seen. Now, if you guys let me let me start with the audience first. If you guys have a question at any time during the show, um, make sure you start it with a Q and then like a, a colon or semicolon or just a Q and then space and then ask your question because I can filter for those 
really, really quickly if I miss it, because sometimes uh, chat's going by uh, on the screen and I don't always uh, see it. And I don't know, hang on a second. I got to figure out where I'm going to put the chat. I apologize in advance, uh, Kyle and Seth, this may go over you. <laughs> no, it didn't. Oh, look at that right in between you guys. This cuts the top of your heads off. That's not too bad. I think that's Perfect. a good spot for it. We'll, we'll leave it there and, uh, and see if it, uh, there we go. So Megan says, hi, everybody. Okay, so that's where the chat's going to appear when we pop it up. If somebody has questions um, or anything else, or Brett just says hi as well. Um, so that's out there. You guys know Brett? Rich, you know Brett, right? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Talks. Good deal. Good deal. All right. Good well, to see everybody out there. Yeah. What have you, how was, uh, now the last time, Rich, I talked to you in uh, Pasadena, I think was the last time. And that was, when was that? October ish? Something like that? September. September? Yes. Man, has it been that September. long already? Wow. <laughs> time time goes by quick. Um, now, I see you're still sporting the large beer that I may poked at you a little bit in Pasadena about. Because you played Santa. Is that accurate? I I am a professional Santa portrayer in the season. Sir. That's so awesome. And, uh, <laughs> you know... You're still sporting the, is this, you're waiting for like Christmas in July at this point now, right? You just might as well hang on to it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Um, I had something to myself. Oh no. I just uh, worked with a photographer and I have her booked for the season. Oh. When it comes to the season. So, nice. yeah. So it's a kind of year round, but seasonal. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. My internet just went a little wonky. I apologize guys. If, uh, if you guys were just affected by that, um, but no, it makes sense. I It takes me like, this is like a week and a half to two weeks of growth. I can't imagine how long it takes to grow that awesome looking beard. Probably. How, this how has not been a year yet. Oh, no kidding? May will be May will be from about a two and three quarter trim. Wow. I'm, I'm jealous. I'm even jealous of, of Kyle's beard down there. Um, <laughs> I, I can't. I'm jealous. I can't. Of Richard. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I can't even grow anything. It's just impossible. Seth, it's just me and you, man. We're we're gonna represent the the non yeah. the, the, the non bearded ones. Yes, <laughs> that's right. That's right. Hey, um, Rich, tell me a little bit about um, ADF Solutions for those maybe uh, have popped onto the show and don't really know or not heard of you or not that familiar with uh, with the company. Sure. So uh, ADF Solutions has been around since about 2005, 2006. Started as an image identification uh, company, you know, tri early starts of triage, and uh, has since just added to that with you know, artifacts, file types, and the image classification. But uh, the sweet spot is in triage, uh, computer. And now uh, we're focusing on triage for mobile. So, That's awesome. Yeah, I remember using yeah, the product. Yeah, a lot of triage oh, yeah. and uh, victim witness consent on the mobile side, as well as you know regular stuff. Yeah, really, uh, really come a long way. Now, how how long has that mobile piece been out? It's uh, a couple of years now, or a year, maybe longer. Twenty eighteen, maybe. Okay, we started Gosh, with yeah, it. it. Seems yeah. like you guys just came out with that. I guess. We're getting older and time is like sped up for me at this point. And, you know, a year turns, it seems like a day or so out there, but uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, I'd be curious to see if anyone out in the audience was, uh, is using uh, any of the, the ADF products at all. Um, and uh, just uh, throw in a hello or yes, ADF rocks, something like that as you guys go. And also if you're watching the post uh, show, it's recorded on either whatever platform that you're watching on, uh, drop it down in the comments below as well. So that's much my attempt to get audience engagement. It's the hardest thing in the world to do with our audience, especially because 90% of the audience is law enforcement. And they're like, I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Normally they're just like, I'm not, I'm not doing it. So I try to bribe and, and trick people into to doing these things. It's about all I can do. Um, now I want to start down here, right? I think below me. Yeah. Kyle. Um, and tell me a little bit about yourself and how you got into the, the crazy digital forensic world. Sure. Yeah. Thanks for having me, Kevin. Um, uh, prior law enforcement officer, uh, I spent just over 10 years uh, in law enforcement, was very lucky to spend more than half of my career as, as a detective. 
uh, worked just about everything, uh, but spent a lot of my time uh, working ICAC or Internet Crimes Against Children. And, uh, you know, beyond that, did some did some homicide work, major crime, sexual assault uh, in, in the Bay Area in, in the San Francisco Bay Area uh, for two uh, pretty busy sheriff's offices. Uh, yeah, my intro to ADF was actually was Rich. Um, I met Rich in it was probably 2016 or 17 down at uh, some training. I, I was when I was a young detective uh, working ICAC, I was I was sent to ADF, um, one of our tools, DEI Pro uh, training certification course in, in San Jose as I was a, a part of the uh, Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force out of Silicon Valley and uh was an end user of of our tool as a detective um some things uh changed in life and kind of transitioned out of out of law enforcement um and 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 here i am so uh still fighting the good fight uh talking to cops all day i'm the law enforcement advisor for adf so uh i still i still get to uh to talk to to real detectives and, and help them out and uh yeah be a resource so yeah, it's not an area you seem like to ever get out of once you're in law enforcement. Is uh, yeah, I still cops are still some of my favorite people, the most orneriest <clears throat> people on the planet normally, but uh, some of my favorite people out there in the world. Uh, so that's awesome, Kyle. Very cool. What part of the what part of the country are you in? So I'm currently in northern Nevada. So okay. uh, I live uh, just just east of Lake Tahoe. Uh, no longer in, in in the Bay Area in San Francisco. But thanks for rubbing in the two two p.m. thing because it, it's not quite lunch for me yet uh, here. So right, yeah. Uh, sorry about that. You're gonna have to work throughout the day some more. <laughs> yeah. just, that's just the way it works. <laughs> yeah. uh, hey, Seth, tell me how you got into this crazy thing. Now, I'm looking at the you know the the screenshot that we first threw up there, and you actually look exactly like your picture there. So you're the only one, uh, including yeah. myself. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that picture was taken uh, not very long ago. I think it was in October uh, by our, our marketing our marketing director. So like, we got to update your headshot. So, so she pinned me down one day when I had a sport coat on and, and took the picture. I'm not very photogenic, so it was uh, she had to twist my arm. But yeah, I, uh, I've been here probably, I've been to ADF for about a year, probably a little over a year. Uh, the, the, they brought me in. Leadership brought me in to uh, to head up the sales uh, and really, you know, put a uh, a customer focused sort of sales methodology to us. And really, it's, it's focusing on the, the customer, making sure the customer is successful, making sure we understand what the customer is doing, and so forth. So I have a a, a long uh, my career has been in enterprise software sales uh, with large software companies. You know, the, the dot com boom. You know, web technology. So, you know, they brought me in here to, to really, you know, to help help spur sales. And uh, I've, been, I've learned a lot. I'm new to the to the forensics industry. So it's uh, been a lot of fun, been a learning curve. And, uh, you know, it feels like uh, 10 years ago that I've been here because I've learned so much. And uh, and what I what I know now and I'm still learning is, is, uh, is, is, is it's, it's amazing how much you can learn in one year uh, about an industry. So it's a lot of fun, especially work, working with Rich and Kyle. Uh, you know, former law enforcement was is fun to work with. Yeah, no, no hazing rituals yet uh, that you've been, you know, victim of, or not that that ever happens in the law enforcement world. I'm just Never. curious. Yeah, uh, next can't, week can't really, first. yeah, can't really say uh, on on live uh, internet TV. <laughs> can't really say. Oh, that's right. You guys have HR to worry about. Never mind. Forget I, yeah. forget I even said anything about that. <laughs> uh, you know, when I was saying that, I, look, I was watching Rich and Kyle's face very closely. And you just see like the, the, the smiles just kind of creep up. They know exactly what's, uh, what's happening. It, it has something to do with beards, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it, it absolutely could. <laughs> And, and Rich, I know, I know that uh, you and I have talked several times about your, your history and stuff, but obviously for the audience today, uh, let everybody know how you got, uh, where you came from, where you started, and then um, how you got uh, involved with ADF. A long, long time ago. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm a dinosaur. Uh, we'll, we'll call it that. I started my law enforcement career in 94. 
uh, forensics in around 99. Uh, retired in 2016 from uh, police department here in Connecticut, the Milford Police Department. Uh, so 17, 18 good years of being a forensic examiner and investigator. Hiring in 2016. Uh, they always say, you know, you know when it's time and it was a bunch of different factors, but retired, came here to ADF in 2016 and been here ever since. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I could go back to being a uh, a cop anymore. It's been I retired in 2012, and man, I just feel for those guys out there now. It's just like oh, I don't know. It's like a, a lot of the stuff that that. happened, I saw it coming. You know. Yeah. And then, you know, and then you got all the, you know, depending on where you live in the country, but we have contract negotiations and pension negotiations and all that factors into it. And training and it's like, you know, right. And then put them all in the bowl, mix it up, and it's time to go. Yeah, right. <laughs> yep. Collect it, the check, and out the door you go. No worries. Now, now Rich, for everybody good. that's watching, there's a smile. <laughs> on every side. The guys that you've worked with that are maybe thinking about retiring, all you got to do is look at Rich, and there's your answer. <laughs> uh, and, and it's funny, um, you know, what made you? And again, I don't want to get too personal. And if you don't want to answer these questions, just tell me to go pound sand. I'll be happy to do so. Um, but what, why, why, why ADF? What was your link from law enforcement to ADF? We know Kyle talked about he was a user, and that's how he came. And is that your similar story with you as well? Um, there was an wasn't necessarily a user, um, but if you look back over my career and what ADF did, I was a big tree. From the beginning, I was a one man shop. There wasn't a lot of people doing it. I was getting work from everybody else. And I was like, you just, I can have an 18 month backlog or I can start triaging stuff. So I, you know, um, so that was the, one of the attractions there. And they were also making a major interface change. And I came on to prepare for that being really. Yeah, I can't remember the year I started using ADF, but it was it was just command line uh, Linux at that time, <laughs> boot up type. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. The change in 2016 went from one really of those, you know, the, it was a Linux boot this that was being used, and that switched from Linux to Windows. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, it blew right into a lot of stuff now. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's crazy um, because it's come so far. I saw it. Um, oh, when was the last time I saw it? Just a few months back, um, I, I was taking a look at it and going, "Man, this!" I wouldn't even recognize it as the same tool. It's it's come so far. It's it's pretty awesome. Um, and this is kind of kind of segue into into the first question I have uh, for who, whoever wants to to grab this. Um, um, and it's funny because I got, I did get a, I'm just going to be transparent. I got a list of questions to, to ask you guys. And, uh, and I don't know if this was intended for you, Rich, because it starts off <laughs> in the early days of digital forensics. <laughs> so I, I don't know if that was like, Oh, am I supposed to ask Rich that question? Is that yeah. what it's supposed to be? <laughs> but hey, Triceratops, do you want to take this one? <laughs> I'm not answering that. <laughs> right. Uh, well, we know, like, obviously there's been, you know, it's, it's funny to watch over each, I don't know, I don't know what to call them, phases or life cycles of, of the digital forensic world. Um, but we've seen several of them. Um, but, but, and, and they've, they've all been with their unique challenges um, for sure. I mean, it, they, they never go away. Um, what's some of the early ones that you can recall of, of, uh, of challenges that are out there? Oh. doesn't have to be back in the early days. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it was different. It was all computer. Um, like I said, I, I adopted triage early because, um, it was bringing them back, you know, bag and tagging everything, bringing it back, taking the hard drives out, you know, connecting those, so lots of cables, uh, Jumper settings, <laughs> you know. Oh man, oh, you flashed me back. I almost forgot about those. <laughs> you know, SCSI drives, uh, 
try to preview out on scene with you know network connections. So I think like the the hardware was probably challenging. You pretty much were able to get into anything in there, but learning was tough. There wasn't a lot of people doing it. No, no. You needed no. somebody who was stubborn, uh, like me, to figure out some stuff. And then either share that knowledge or call somebody up and say, you know, I'm about to throw this computer through the window. Have you ever done this before? <laughs> you know? <laughs> right. So, yeah, you know, I, I kept kept my old forensic machines because as things changed, you know, you weren't able to get into some stuff with the newer machines. You had to go back to your older machines. Daisy changing, chain, chaining cables. Oh, know, man. Trying to get a hard drive out of a Mac. <laughs> yeah, where these extra modern parts problem. Come from? Trying to get a hard drive out of a Mac. <laughs> uh, no, that's, that's, that's not my stuff. computer, not my problem, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Here's your computer and a bag of extra parts. Um, so. Couldn't quite remember where they all went, but uh, but, but there they go. <laughs> and uh, Brett says, "Yeah, oh, it all seems like uh, like yesterday." Yeah. <laughs> Man, I, I I completely forgot about jumpers on on the, the drives until you brought that back up. I think, uh, is there a such thing as like forensic PSD or, you know, what's the, uh, <laughs> PSD, PSD, yeah. PSD, is, there, PSD, yeah. is there such thing? <laughs> because that just brought some trauma back trying to get these things up. And, uh, Larry's like, uh, Hey, jumper <laughs> settings. I just broke out into a cold sweat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> Uh, Poor Kyle, Seth's just looking at the screen. What's that? <laughs> Poor Seth yeah, is just I'll, I'll staring ask, at the yeah, screen. Yeah, what, what are jumper settings? I mean, this this. <laughs> I don't even understand what that means. Well, we we, we we can't tell you. It's part of the, yeah. part of the <laughs> forensic part, cult. Part of, part of the haze, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Brings up language we can't use anymore either. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, Kyle, what about you? Uh, what are some of the challenges that, that you uh, recall in the in the lab? How long has it been since you've been out of uh, out of the lab full time? So I was um, I was never full time in the lab. I was more case agent kind of guy. Um, you know, had had an elementary friend, working forensic skill set, um, uh, a user of ADF up, down, and sideways for sure. But typically, that's where my expertise ended uh was you know when i found what i wanted to find or what i needed to get um or i did my preview i did my triage for mm -hmm. the icac you know residential search warrant um i got i got the the pointers i needed to get to to steer the case in the direction that i wanted to go or want needed to go uh, i handed it off to a guy like rich um <laughs> you know uh, and, and I, this all makes me laugh because I, you know, it sounds, I sound like such a millennial. I, I am, I am a millennial, uh, <laughs> um, but, uh, it, you know, I've been, I've been rather spoiled, you know, because, um, my, uh, my time as a detective and, and, and my exposure to forensics, um, has been, you know, plug and play for the most part. I, I don't even know what you, you know, jumper cables. I'm, I'm with you, Seth. I'm. I'm uh, I'm outside the club on that one, um, but but yeah no so I I've been I've been spoiled and, and again you know more my 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 expertise was more case agent running the show kind of thing uh, you know working the case up to search warrant hitting the house uh, using ADF um, even beyond ICAC uh, but uh, definitely ICAC for all for all search warrants. Uh, but again, taking, getting what I could get and then, and then passing it off for, you know, for a deeper dive back at the lab. Um, but yeah, but, I mean, challenges, it's, uh, this, it's constantly evolving, you know, and this is, uh, it's, it's hard to keep up with, um, with the evolution of this because there's always something new. There's always something new to learn. Um, you know, challenges, you know, that I, I experience. obviously, you know, uh, things being encrypted or, or passcodes um, and just there's always something new out there that the, the crooks are leveraging or exploiting to, you know, to to uh, uh, avoid law enforcement, uh, avoid detection and uh, their location. And, and it's just it's a it, it also makes it fun, though, obviously, you know, that's that's part of the game. It's 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 
um, cops and robbers and, uh, you know, like uh, you, like you play as a kid and, um, uh, that, that's, that's it for me. Just, just keeping up with the times. I, I, um, uh, definitely not as, as technical guys like Rich and the folks in the lab. So for me, it takes uh, an extra level of, of, of care, um, and, and, and nurturing to really uh, stay up to speed. So. Yeah. In, in Kyle, all fairness, I, I have forgotten most of, I haven't done a forensic case since 2012 when I retired. Uh, so I've forgotten how to do one. I just sit and talk about it. Now it's easier. Yeah. <laughs> I don't actually have to do the work. Uh, yeah. I can just talk to smarter guys like yourself <laughs> out there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I, I can take the higher road any day of the week, but when it comes down to it, I, I haven't done a case in a long time, <laughs> any day. Now exactly. you guys had mentioned uh, mobile um, and uh, that you guys have started doing mobile way back. Um, what are some of the, the new challenges or, um, maybe there's things that you guys see on the horizon with, with mobile. Now I, I, I talk about this subject a lot cause obviously that was, that was kind of my, my field. Uh, I, lo I loved mobile. Well, it was a love hate relationship really, uh, back in, I'm going to do this rich back in my day. It was, uh, <laughs> there was a different freaking cable for every phone that came out on planet earth <laughs> and you were like, Man, I gotta find a cable for this too, and telling the the guys on scene to seize the cables for Christ's sake. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, what, what do you guys see as some of the new challenges that the uh, the current examiners out there uh, are going to be facing, or not today, but maybe you see something a few years down the road that's coming, um, and you can guess because we're wrong on this show often. Uh, so <laughs> feel free to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I like this question because, um, it, it, what, what a juxtaposition to, you know, kind of Rich's, you know, early uh, dinosaur days, you know, when everything was computers, um, everything is mobile now. I, I say that grossly, um, you know, the computers are still an element of, of investigations, uh, but the power of, of a mobile device these days is just, it's, it's incredible. Uh, I mean, you can run a, you can run a business off of a, a phone. You can, uh, you can do everything. It's it just, it, it, you know, I speak to my family abroad, you know, within seconds and I can FaceTime my children with them. Uh, it's, it's, it's pretty neat. But with that comes, um, challenges for law enforcement because this, uh, you know, the size, uh, the, the storage sizes of these devices, uh, are, are just growing and growing and growing. Um, and, and how do we keep up with that? How do we, uh, extract data in a, in a timely manner, um, uh, in an efficient manner? Uh, that's, it's, uh, it's difficult because everyone's got a phone. Most people got to have two phones these days. Um, and uh you know beyond uh beyond just the 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 internet crimes against children world uh you know I, i'll go out on a limb here you know you're not you're not always leveraging cellular mobile data in your investigations uh but there's always an opportunity to you know maybe you don't have the time maybe the case doesn't you don't need it but cases these days are are being solved uh, by data that we're pulling off of phones, whether it's off the physical phone or it's data that's held, you know, by the, the service providers and, um, uh, mobile devices are, 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 are the core of that, you know, betting down a suspect to a location, um, you know, getting photos, getting text messages, uh, establishing intent. Uh, it's just, it's, it, everything goes back to a, a mobile device. Um, so, so ensuring that you're, you're, you're leveraging that data and you're capturing that data is in my opinion, it's, it's critical to, to good casework. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Rich, what about, what about your thoughts on here? What, what do you think are some challenges? I'm going to ask you to put on your Swami future, uh, sooths hat and, uh, kind of look into the future. And what do you, what do you see on the horizons? Yeah, no, no, this is, this is thinking out of the box and out of left field. Yeah. Um, you know, there are a lot of challenges. I think we all know what those are, but that phone is just going to be a piece of hardware that makes connections. Shelves. There's no, they're going to make it so there's nothing on that. That, that. That's my thought process. You're going to need to go back to 
providers or clouds or somewhere else. That's not going to yeah, I, I, I feel the same way. I'm sorry. I didn't, I realized I didn't have my computer and do not disturb. And I started getting a phone call. Speaking of phones, <laughs> 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 the biggest challenge is for getting to put them on mute when, when you're on a show live. <laughs> it's not what you can do. Yeah. I mean, you know, what was that phone rich that we, we did all the sidekick was it the sidekick that didn't store any data on it at all. And then that didn't go over so well. Um, I think it was mainly because of, you know, at that time it was still dial up speeds basically across uh, cellular <laughs> networks. Uh, but now obviously with, with 5g now, I mean, it's super, it's faster than most home internet is, uh, you really see everything just going, Hey, it's all stored in the cloud and very little is going to be on, on your handset. I mean, that's with, with privacy concerns and, what they're doing slowly locking, trying to lock everybody back out when they get back in, you know, they're, they're there to turn the screw again. Um, really, I, that's the, that's the way I think it's going. Yeah. And then, um, of course, then we'll have, to I could be wrong that. on your show. <laughs> that, that's okay. I'm wrong all the time. It's just, we, we're used to it. We just, we just run with it. We come up with an awesome idea and play the Mr. Rogers land of make believe. And we just run with it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> the scene, did Kyle get the Mr. Rogers joke? Okay, he might have, yeah. <laughs> I'm just messing, man. That's, it, it wouldn't be the show without me messing with one of you at least. <laughs> uh, yeah, so Grease Monkey's got a good, uh, a good question here. Um, how long before all the ports are just removed from phones, right? Before they're just gone. Have we seen that yet in a phone? I don't, I don't, I'm not, my finger's not on the pulse enough uh, getting phones in and out, but do all of them still have pretty much uh, access ports in and out? As far as I know, I don't think there's one yeah. out there yet. I mean, I know they lock the ports out if they can. Yeah, yeah I know they can shut them down and I know yeah. they, they like to hide them as well in some devices like, um, you know, the watch and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it's, it'd be interesting to see when that gets totally locked down. Um, and then it's just, you know, over the air Bluetooth connections or whatever, cause there's still going to have to be a way to, to send data back and forth. That'll, that'll be interesting. <laughs> now we can yeah. fast forward to one of my favorite topics is the topic of AI. Um, we, we talk about this all the time and, uh, what impact do you think that that's going to have in both sides? Let's let's approach this from think like a criminal, right? Because the cops make the best criminals because we know how not to get caught, right? And then uh, well, we could that's a joke, people don't 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 report me. To YouTube. <laughs> and then how to uh, you know how to use AI then again for uh, investigations as well. Um, let's let's touch both sides of that coin. Uh, what do you guys think about that? Let's to grab one. that one. <laughs> I, you well, know, AI. AI... Go ahead, Seth. No, go ahead, Rich. You were, you were, you had something. Yeah, no, I mean, there, there's a lot. I, I, I'm going to be generic here. Um, let the other guys take some of it. But like, image creation is one of the biggest things right now, especially the child expert. That needs to be that needs to be uh, taken by the horns and dealt with head on, you know, because yep. that's going to, you know, not only law enforcement but legal's got to get the law has to get involved and written and you know sticks. That has. Uh, to be and, and the other side of it, it's just think about these, you know, how many people are writing things with Chat GPT or Gemini or whatever it is. So you know, you can't be using that to do your reports, <laughs> you know, or, or trying to write a warrant or something like that. Things still need to be Man, I um, that. <laughs> verified. So even though it does it, you still have to go through it with a fine tooth, fine tooth comb to make sure everything's right. But it really can't be validated because you could ask, ask it, have it write something once, and then it's not going to be the same the next time. No, because we use, um, and, you and know, with the, with the youth, sorry, Kyle, um, you know, getting used and have grown up with this stuff. It's just, it's something I think just needs to, that needs to be prohibited, <laughs> if you will. 
Yeah, there's some pieces of it that I, I think are, are, are helpful. Um, we, we use it every day, probably here in, in our company. Um, obviously, for, it's great for certain things like um, our project management system. We have AI built into the project management system. And um, Megan, who's uh, down here in the, in the comments somewhere, you, she can use it to, hey, can you summarize what happened today or all the new tasks or what needs done or what didn't get done? And AI will go through that and, and pull all the da that data out um, for her. So AI in that aspect, I think, is phenomenal. But as you mentioned, when it comes to creating, you know, uh, child exploitation images, things like that, legislation definitely needs to get involved um, with, with that aspect of it. Now, I envision a day to be like, um, uh, what, what was that movie that, uh, that Tom Cruise played in? I just talked about this the other day. Minority Report. Yes. <laughs> they use an AI to kind of detect future stuff happening. Now, hopefully we never get to the point where we just rely on it 100%, right? Hopefully there's some, some boots on the ground in there. Yeah, Megan got it, Minority Report as well. Um, and hopefully, you know, I'd like to see AI after, you know, uh, our tools are great, right? Um, but there's always that little bit of help to help shorten things up. Um, like triage has done for the industry is maybe AI can go, Hey, is there anything on here that may be related to this type of crime? And of course the AI has to be trained properly. Um, and then it either shows it to you or it doesn't. That would be awesome. I might get back into forensics again, if that's the case, if that, if that ever happens, you just don't have to do anything. Uh, those would be the days. That's I think that's quite a ways off, but, uh, yeah. How do you think, how do you guys think about AI helping investigators solve crimes? What do you think about yeah, that? What's your opinion? Yeah. I think that is, that's where the opportunity is for, for tech companies like us is to figure out how to implement AI, you know, in the, in the analysis part of, of gathering and, and looking at the evidence and figuring out what, what we should do next on top of that. And I think that's really, you know, where we are, but we also, also have to balance it out. Like Rich was saying on, you know, what is real, you know, what evidence is real, what is not real and how does this pertain to, to certain crimes? So we got a, a big challenge ahead of us. I think, you know, on the tech side, again, and I'll just emphasize it for us, looking at ways to, to, to make digital forensics easier, you know, on law enforcement is really, you know, where we're looking at and where we're, I think that's where the opportunity lies as well. Yeah. If you ever need some crazy sci-fi ideas, man, I have a long list of stuff. I'm happy to send them your way. So there you go. <laughs> Kyle, do you got an opinion on this? You've been quiet this whole AI thing. Did you have a bad AI experience? You know, did one threaten to kill you, or I mean, you don't have a big opinion on it? What's what's happening? Yes, I have nightmares every night, Kevin, on AI. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah I, I'm I'm really torn. I mean, I, I know I'm 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 preaching to the choir here. Yeah, you know, it's it's it's, it's a beautiful thing, in, in some aspects, you know, me with my experience working CP and CSAM cases, it's incredibly frightening um you just how do you handle that uh the the generation of uh creating cp csam material that's ai gen generated and, and there's it's not really a, a there's not really a person behind that you know it, it draws up you know a really uh scary conversation to be have had i mean this is above me but from a from a litigation from a legal perspective you know uh who's the victim uh it's right. it's really because it's it's a it it, it definitely um it does not i don't want it to happen you know i don't want this being created uh but what does that look like how do you go after that how do you charge it um it, it's scary you know but um so it's going to be interesting to see how they regulate it, how they monitor it uh, moving forward. Um, uh, but, but, you know, on, on the plus side, just, you know, like uh, Rich alluded to, you know, we're, we're using it, uh, you know, you can turn it off if you want on our tool, but, and it is AI, it's not perfect, but, uh, you know, on the back end of acquisitions, you can, you can look for, you know, you can look for guns, you can look for toddlers, you can look for uh, different, uh, 
profiles that meet, you know, that, that, that the AI kind of guidelines that were our, our search profiles look for. So, um, you know, from that angle, it's, it's great. You know, it saves the investigator uh, hours and hours, you know, uh, again, going back to just how, how heavy duty phones and, and items are, you know, how much data is on there. How do you go through that in a timely manner? Well, you know, AI turned on uh, with uh, different uh, confidence uh, levels. You can you can locate the gun. You can locate the CP faster. You know, on the on the uh, on the device, and, and really you know save time. So, um, as much as I am you know younger and have have grown up with this, um, I, I equally <laughs> am as concerned uh, about what this what this will do to. Um, you know, the fight against child exploitation and, and, you know, how organizations like Nick Mick handle this, you know, uh, they're already getting millions and millions, you know, 20 plus million. I, last I checked last year of, of cyber tips, you know, what is this, what is this going to do to their workload? Um, yeah, scary, scary stuff. Yeah. Now you guys have, you have AI in your tool, right? What, uh, yeah. I, gosh, I didn't even uh, think to ask that question. What, um, what does it do exactly for you within the tool? How does it, how does it, how would it make my life easier? Pretend I'm a normal investigator, not one that hasn't known anything for a long time. <laughs> well, two, two of the biggest ones in there are photo classification. There's about 13 different classifiers in there. Weapons, vehicles, portraits, people, weapons. Uh, I might've said that already. Uh, currency, a couple different types of pornographies. Get that classifier, and then we have age group detection in there. What breaks that down further into infant, child, toddler? Just kind of breaks it all down. Yeah, your mic's cutting in just a little, in and out a little bit, Rich. Um, I oh. noticed that earlier. I don't know if it's a volume thing or, or what. You have a in the industry we call because I used to be a radio guy. I worked radio long, early twenties, like so, yeah. like, really long time ago. It sounds like you have an audio gate that's almost kicking on and off to cut background noise. Um, that's what it, what, what it sounds like. It's happening there. Try to sit really still when I talk. Yeah, don't. <laughs> I'm a fidgeter, <laughs> so don't move. I'm gonna I'm gonna paste you guys' website so people can go in uh, and take a look at that. There, it's in in chat. And if you're um, if you're looking after the fact, like if you're not watching this live and you're watching the post in there, I'll put it down in the in the description. I'll put you guys' website down there. So. Um, People will, uh, will drive over there and, uh, and can take a peek at it um, as well, uh, for sure. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's interesting to see that the AI um, helping investigators, man, I really think that's going to be a, a big thing um, because just the volume of data, just volume of data anymore. I know we've alluded to it several times. Uh, granted, I think, I think my phone is, I think I went crazy when I got Got the 15. Uh, I had a, I had a, I think the last, the last one I used to upgrade. I used to be one of those crazy guys that stood in line for this thing overnight. Uh, yeah, I was one of those people. Uh, cause I am, well, I was a technology nerd and, um, you know, now uh, I don't, I'm definitely in my fifties plus because now I'm just like, eh, it really doesn't do anything else. I, I've seen that, that change happen in me of where, you know, some people call it the change of life. I call it the change in perspective of age of technology because now it's just one of those things. But I did go a little crazy with this. I went and I'm trying to look at the exact storage is what I'm trying to to grab out. Yeah, <laughs> I thought, I feared that. It's a terabyte of data <laughs> on this little phone. That's so stupid, but it's the only one they had in stock that I could get within a couple of days. And my other phone, which was an 11, died the battery just wouldn't hold a charge anymore so i bought this <laughs> terabyte of data on my phone um that's as much as my my mac has set in here which is insane my laptop has it has a terabyte um well yeah i mean and that's that's a, a perfect use case right there for just going through um you know the volumes of data uh, to help and assist with that man I, I couldn't imagine looking at a terabyte of data um and the old ways that we used to have to do things. Uh, so yep. tools like yours really, really helps that out, man. <laughs> Keep trekking. One of the nice things about ADF is if, if, if you know what you're looking for, you can get a, rid of a lot of the white noise. Terabyte of. 
Yeah. Uh, and, and you're lucky because this is brand new, so there's really nothing on there. I mean, there'll, there'll be a few <laughs> pictures of my dog and some bad dad memes, which I'm known to post often. If you follow me on social media, there's really bad dad jokes on there. But that's about it. <laughs> so it wouldn't take you long to go through mine. But it will be. Pretty soon it will be full of bad dad memes. And uh, then that's going to cause some in- investigators some heartache if they ever have to go through it. <laughs> not, <laughs> not saying that I would need to be looked at for anything. I'm just saying just to be clear there. Um, what do you guys think about some of the, the other emerging technologies that's going to kind of help transform? Now, we didn't talk about AI. Is there anything else out there you guys think is going to change the, the way the space is looking out there? Seth, you look like you got something initially on your mind. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is, this is uh, what, what kind of amazes me about law enforcement a little bit is, um, is, is the, the technology is already there. Right, that that needs to be leveraged, and again, we can say that the, the buzzword "cloud" you know, needs to be be leveraged. But you know, in, in the digital forensics world, you know, you talk to different you know digital labs and, and, and folks that they they have to share a lot of you know extractions you know with other agencies, right? And and what kind of blows me away again, coming from a high tech background, is that they're still sharing all this this data you know physically. They're driving and handing it off with, with thumb drives and hard drives. And then it just it, it amazes me that they're not already leveraging, you know, cloud technology, which has been around for, for 20 years at this point and could save a lot of time and a lot of energy. And right. so for us, like, you know, and again, talking to customers, you know, the, the, the idea is to, to really leverage what's there to make their life easier. And so, uh, again, I think the cloud is, is, is an opportunity, but it's also, as I think, Rich or, or Kyle alluded to, it's also a challenge because a lot of the uh, the evidence is going to also be in those cloud applications that are going to be hard to get to from a digital forensic perspective. Uh, so there lies the challenge and, and sort of the, the opportunity for us to help law enforcement. Um, so that that's kind of what, what I what I see here now. Uh, but I also think that uh, in, again, that the technology can improve law enforcement's ability to get that as, as well. Kyle, am I, am I am I missing something there? Yeah, uh, it's uh, you're right. You're spot on. I, I mean, it's uh, the days. Uh, it, believe it or not, uh, you know, of, you know, driving to the lab and, and physically. I'm sure there's some jurisdictions that are doing better, um, but uh, driving. 20 minutes to the lab, uh, if you're lucky, maybe it's in the same building and physically taking possession of, you know, a, an external hard drive with your, you know, bit for bit copy of your, you know, uh, the, the evidence that you, you, you took at the, the recent search warrant still exists. Um, sadly, uh, CD-ROM still exists as well. Uh, <laughs> like the, ripping the, you know, the photos, crime scene photos to a CD-ROM, uh, you know, if you're lucky, maybe you're you're seeing USB sticks be used, uh, but there is, uh, you know, there there is that uh, still still going on, and it, that's something we're we're working on. You know, it is uh, it is a platform to allow you to share uh, uh, digital evidence collaboratively. You know, where you're not you're eliminating that kind of archaic step to to uh the handling of evidence um no but you're spot on uh seth and it's 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 embarrassing but it's uh it's just the kind of way the way it is as advanced as we are in some aspects of digital forensics we are also so incredibly behind um in in others so yeah that's that's pretty amazing because this conversation this topic was was being had back in 2012 before i left Mm -hmm. um and because law enforcement just distrusts the cloud, I think it's more of a, a distrust versus a, a technology. I'm, I'm sure, I mean, the speeds now are, are ridiculous, but granted, the sizes of the tech of the storage mechanisms are also getting larger as the transfer rates get faster. So I don't know if they're balancing each other out and they still feel equally as slow out there. Um, but I know there's still a lot of distrust of putting data up in the cloud. Um, well, well like, think think about this, Kevin. Think about this. I can take my, my phone here, and I can download and watch the Terminator, the movie, without any delay. Again, talking about AI, I had to, had to throw a Terminator in there, right? Had, yeah, so I can watch that. Make it scary. 
had to make, had it, to make scary. it scary. <laughs> so, so I can watch that on, on my phone and I don't even have to be connected to Wi-Fi. I could be out, you know, on, on a 5G network. Right. Yep. And so, again, so the ability in the infrastructure is there to help law enforcement, again, to, 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 to save some time. But ultimately, and this is where I'm always trying to figure out is how can we help how can we help law enforcement speed up, you know, the case, get the case to closure faster. Yep. Uh, and that's what uh, that's what we're always kind of trying to think about. But the status quo is is really hard to hard to overcome sometimes, actually, most of the time. Yeah, I was one of those one of those cops sitting in a lab anti cloud. I mean, we built massive servers and spent ridiculous amounts to store it all on site. And then uh, I've changed since then. <laughs> I've had a, a a coming to the technology gods moment where it's like, man, you cannot possibly maintain and store all of this data and without pushing it to a bigger infrastructure somewhere. Um, you know, because you're there's a multitude of reasons uh, for that. Uh, mm -hmm. But no, I have since changed my mind and I'd be curious to see some of those reasons that that law enforcement still has not to because, um, you know, obviously it's still there. It still exists um, as a why they're not um, utilizing cloud storage is because they're they're worried about chain of, of custody type issues, something like that. Maybe Kyle Rich, what do you guys think of, of, yeah, of and, that? And because they don't know what 18 year olds working in that. That center, that data center. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm making stuff up. I don't want to put fear in anybody's head like Terminator. But <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm sure some of its security. And yeah, I was a little harsh. Security. I mean, while 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 there is while we're definitely law enforcement can be behind the times. I mean, there there is a big push already that you know we're using cloud based storage for more run of the mill evidence, but uh, my, my statement was more specific to like what's going on in the lab on a forensic level. And, and I mm -hmm. think the biggest hurdle is just, you know, the, the size, you know, when you get a bit for bit copy of a PC, like that is just massive. So what do you do with it? And I think that's, um, it's like, I retract my statement a little, I don't want to totally bad mouth, you know, current practices, because it's not terrible, but there's definitely room for improvement uh, when it comes to the, the digital evidence we're extracting from from physical devices. Yeah, yeah. Anyone else have any thoughts, Rich? Any thoughts on the on the on the cloud? Yeah, yeah. I mean, law enforcement not trusting, cynical, <laughs> stubborn. Pretty much just the same as it's always been. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just, security's right. got to be there. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's, it's come such a long You way. have to have that trust yeah. that when you're doing something, that security yeah. there, nobody else that can trust. Yeah, I mean, they, I don't they, know if everybody. They trust NCIC. I mean, it's uh, cloud based. You know, I'm just saying <laughs> that the information that they get about when they run a plate, out of state plates. I mean, it's all it's all being moved somewhere. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, I, I think it's just a mindset uh, issue, and and I can't believe that. I, I really thought, and that, that was an interesting question. Uh, I really thought that law enforcement would be just had embraced cloud by now, um, and just go up and give it a big shiny fuzzy hug. But apparently, they have not. Um, I'd be curious to see some of those other reasons too. Uh, that's interesting. That's an interesting question. Well, you know, I, speaking, maybe I shouldn't speak sometimes, but some dinosaurs need to be pushed out of the way in order for things to move. <laughs> yeah, it could be, but I mean, are we, are, are our generation of examiner, did we teach the new generation that, that same mindset is what I'm worried about, you know? <laughs> Did we yeah. teach them to distrust cloud? And hopefully that's not the hopefully that's not the case. Because I mean, what's the do you guys what's the size of the largest drive that's out right now that you guys can get in a uh, in a PC or a computer? I have no idea. I just did a quick look on Amazon where we're sitting here chatting. Um, and there's a Seagate Iron Wolf Pro single NAS drive that you can get. It's 22 terabytes. I was like, what? <laughs> it's only 400 bucks. That's not horrible for uh, for 22 terabytes of data. Uh, that's crazy. Oh, Ron Scene 20. Um, 
But I'm I'm looking at this. Yeah, if you guys look at all I did is I went to Amazon. I searched largest hard drive because uh, I lack creativity, and Amazon is searching. It's gotten pretty good, and it shows the Seagate Iron Wolf Pro, 22 terabyte, insane. And I'm sure there's something larger than that. That's literally the first one I came across. It's wild. It's wild. Yeah, imagine on scene collecting that bad boy. Woo. That's crazy. Yeah, Vicky says that. Okay, uh, Brandon, it's not full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. I don't think I can fill that up with uh, dad, bad dad beams anytime soon. <laughs> I, I might see it as a challenge, though. I, I bet you I could try. <laughs> yeah, Vicky says she did learn to uh, to mistrust the uh, the cloud, and uh, Ron says to uh, to bring a raid on on that one. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, guys, I didn't get through half of these questions that uh, we we had uh, set to chat about. Um, is there any points that you guys would like to make? I'll, I'll, I'll run through the panel here um, to make sure that if there's something that you wanted to hit on that we make sure we do, don't worry about if it, if it goes past three. Um, that just gives people an excuse not to work longer. Um, so we can we can do that, no problem, because Kyle's got a full day ahead of him yet. So I'm sure he'll be yeah. fine with, uh, <laughs> with, with going a little longer. No, no worries. But uh, I'm going to start with uh, Seth. Can I start with you? I hate sure, to, to sure. I hate to be the the person that picks people in the crowd, but uh, that's the way it rolls right now. Um, anything <clears throat> no, I mean, that that you wanted to make sure you hit on that you know some of the challenges law enforcement is having, and that you guys can help help them solve, maybe. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that everything we're talking about are all kind of related, right? Like one of the things when when it comes the challenges that we're seeing a lot of our customers face is is just the sheer volume of, of, of mobile phones that they have to deal with on a, on a daily basis. Right. And then when you, when you couple that with the, the amount of data that can be extracted from all of those, those phones, that's a massive amount of data that, that law enforcement has to deal with, whether it's an investigator, you know, or an examiner. And so what we try to do at ADF is reduce the amount of data that you have to deal with. So it makes it easier on all parties involved. Right. Uh, easier on the storage, easier on the investigator, easier on, on the prosecution, you know, and so forth. And again, and it goes back to our sort of mission is to, to, to help solve cases faster, you know, and that's what we like to talk about. And, um, you know, there's so many challenges and so many things to balance within that, but that is really, you know, kind of ADF sort of, of mission or the way I look at it, that's, that's our mission here, uh, you know, to help law enforcement. Well, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I got to ask one more time before I, I, I go to the next person. What is that guitar? I've been wanting to ask the whole, and I'm trying to stay on topic, and it's I'm so ADD struck and like it's a nice shiny object, literally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Setting yeah, behind it is. you. It's what, a, what is that? It, it, that that is a, a AC Zematis uh, a a guitar. It's an AC Zematis, uh, and it's actually stainless steel uh, nope. inlay. It's it's very heavy, uh, plays good, got a very long neck. But my favorite one is that one, and that is a a, a Takamimi acoustic that I play every day. That uh, I'm not any good, but it, it, I'm not any good, but it's fun to play. Yeah, I have two that I've never uh, learned to play. Don't ask why. I don't know. I thought it'd be cool <laughs> to own a guitar. I own one. Can't play it. <laughs> two. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's awesome. Stainless steel. Yep. The, the inlay is. Yeah, it's heavy too. It's a lot heavier than a Les Paul, and Les yeah. Pauls are heavy. Really? Huh. That's very awesome. Very awesome. All right, Kyle, I'm jumping over to you. Anything last uh, point you want to make or a challenge that we didn't bring up that uh, that you guys have a good solution for? Yeah, I, I think just piggybacking off of what Seth said, and um, you know, I'm, I'm biased. I, I I I love ADF. I work for ADF, but I think I mean this uh, with my kind of detective hat on here. Um, the reality of of the. the uh, devices that we're running into that detectives are running into are getting larger and larger and larger. And the pain point here is, you know, I don't, I don't have time on scene or to do a full acquisition, or I don't, I don't have, um, you know, a, a, a victim or a consenting person of interest that's going to hand over their phone for, for hours to do a full, you know, hex view physical on it. And, uh, that's where we enable our investigators is, um, you know, uh, if the reality is that the device is going back to the lab to be plugged in for, for hours uh, on end, which is fine, we provided that solution that allows you to, as the detective, as the, you know, as I put it, uh, as the knuckle dragger myself, not the forensic guy, 
to get at least the pointers that I need to, uh, that I need in hand right now to start working my case. And, uh, uh, that that's incredibly powerful and I'm proud to, you know, that, that we have that capability to, to really push the investigation forward for the investigators. Um, so they can start working the case, um, uh, and then, and then do, do a deeper dive later. Um, I think it's pretty powerful in the, in the world of, in the, the day and age of just larger and larger 22 terabyte, you know, systems that are getting rolled out. Uh, you, you can't, it's not reasonable to wait, uh, you know, for all that to be analyzed. But, um, if you can grab the basics, what you need right then and there, uh, you know, you're, you're, that's a, that's a powerful, uh, angle when working your case. So, uh, no, that, that, that's it for me, Kevin. I, I appreciate it. That's very cool. Very cool. And Rich, anything uh, else that you wanted to touch on, my friend? <laughs> along with, with what Kyle was saying, it's uh, kind of have a lane. ADF's always been in the lane of uh, getting to information fast, getting you what you need. Uh, things have changed. Like you said, there's a lot of data. Um, victim witness consent. Um, sometimes you know your case, and it's like, I just need this one thing. One thing. Mm -hmm. We give you the ability to do that. You'll be able and, to, uh, you know, with that. Sorry, my dog decided to start whining all of a sudden. So, right as the show's getting ready to go over, there she goes. <laughs> Let's feature yeah. yourself right on there. <laughs> all right, she's done. I and think. with that, me. so, you know, we're given the ability now. We just started with Chromebooks. There's a lot more on the way with that. Um, but it also leads us into the Internet of Things. Having the ability to get, you know, questions are asked every day. Can you get into this? Can you get into this? Nobody's doing it. Challenges, but things we're looking at. because. Yeah. And you guys have, man, like I said, you guys have been out there just cracking away at the front line, folks. Um, I know, Rich, you know this, but uh, I was one of the early beta testers for that software when you guys first started out. When I saw JJ at, I can't remember what show it was I met him at, Cleveland HTCIA show maybe, something like that, way back, way back when. And uh, that, it's just awesome to see you guys still out there helping uh, uh, investigators and examiners out there just crank through it um, and making their lives easier. Gosh, because it's, it's, not, it's not easy, especially when I'm looking at this. I might buy this 22 terabyte drive <laughs> and uh, <laughs> just to see if I, how long it would take me to fill it up. Yeah, uh, crime and that's crazy, but, uh, help investigators, you know, do stuff like that, man, that's just a, a, a time saver for sure. When, especially, you know, you know, I'm just thinking random cases like a, a missing kid or, you know, something what they've been chatting with an adult on like that to, to really be able to, to lock in and find that information pretty quick. Um, and, and your triage, uh, capabilities would, would really help with that, man. That's just awesome. So thank you guys so very much for doing what you do, number one. And number two, you, you suffered an hour and five minutes or four minutes with me so far. So thank you for that as well. Uh, it, it went by fast, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That was it went by fun. Pretty quick. Yeah. So awesome. Um, so guys, don't forget, I'm going to paste this one more time in here because um, I don't want anyone to lose it. And again, I'll put it in the, uh, the notes in, in the show as well. And you guys are a sponsor of Cyber Social Hub. So uh, if anyone wants to uh, ask a couple questions, uh, they can get a hold of you either on your website um, or jump into the hub. And uh, one of you guys, if you're not in there already, you should sign up and come in there. People are always have questions about this type of thing that you guys would be able to, to answer for them um, pretty quickly. So thank you again very, very much. I appreciate your time here. Um, and uh, thank everyone else for hanging out for the whole time. And you guys did. It actually, uh, they hung out the entire time. And they, I didn't even make fun of anybody that bad, really. Um, <laughs> not, not too bad. Anyway, usually it's, it's worse. But you guys, you guys got pretty easy today. It's a light day for us. <laughs> All right. Again, th guys, thanks much. I appreciate your time so much. Don't go anywhere. Hang out. Uh, we're going to go and uh, wrap the show. Uh, again, guys, thanks so much. I appreciate you. Thanks, Kevin.